This is a hydrogen alpha filter. Let me show you a real world example of a bicolor image being post post processed. Man, <laughs> would you look at that? G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Have you ever thought about getting a monochrome camera and getting into doing those filter runs separately so you can make a color image from the monochrome images? Or perhaps you're mid session and you just don't feel like doing that third filter to finish it off and you just wanna make an image? Or do you like sausages and kebabs? If you answered no, no, yes, then you're probably looking for bisexual information. That's not on this channel. This is an astronomy channel. We do like astrophotography and telescopes and stuff. But if you answered yes, yes, no, you're probably interested in bicolor image processing. So today I'm going to open my kimono a little bit and show you the quick and dirty ghetto processing I do on this image I just finished. And by finished, I mean, I gave up because I couldn't get any more gaps in the clouds and uh, space between the rain to actually finish a full filter run. So stick around and I'll show you how it's done. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Two videos in two weeks? What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. I'm saving up for something. So, this video is sponsored by High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific will sell you astronomy gear of any brand. They have a huge selection and they have a price match guarantee. So there really is no reason to shop anywhere else, especially if you're in America. And if you're struggling with some astrophotography stuff, apart from this channel here where you can learn a bunch of stuff, you can just ask them questions directly and they'll support you to get you where you want to go with your astrophotography journey. Uh, the best review that I can give on all of the equipment I use is whether or not I'm using it from image to image to image. Look at the stuff I'm using. I can't give you any better kind of recommendation than that. So all the links to everything I use to make photos are in the description below. All right. This is a hydrogen alpha filter. It is the most popular filter you can use for narrowband astrophotography. Uh, whenever we are doing color images with a monocamera, camera, you can use narrowband or broadband. The narrowband stuff is usually hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And the broadband stuff is RGB, red, green, and blue. But you can replace red with hydrogen and it works really well. Now for bicolor, the most popular combination is HOO because there's not a lot of green in space anyway. All the green in your images is essentially just a component of the white. So for blue, we can use the oxygen three filter, which is more of a teal color. And then we can map that channel to green. So the red is a hydrogen, the green and the blue is oxygen three. And that gives us a pretty close approximation of a true natural color image. But don't take my word for it. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, so let me show you a real world example of a bicolor image being post post processed. Here we go. Okay, so here I have the hydrogen stack and here I have the O3 stack. These have been auto stretched for preview, uh, but that stretch has not been applied. Um, then we go into the channel combination tool in PixInsight. I've mapped H to R, I've matched O to green and blue. Now, if you're curious about how to set these identifiers, you just click up in the, uh, the top of the tab here on an image and, you, and I've set that to H, just makes it easier to map these channels. So HOO, which is probably the most common bicolor combination you'll ever see out there. Uh, it, and it works pretty well. Uh, let's apply that and see what hot garbage we get. Uh, there we go. Let's hit the auto stretch nuke. And what do we see? It's a hot mess, just as I described. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here is the color calibration. So just defaults in PixInsight here. I'm just going to using the worst user interface in the world. Uh, completely non-intuitive. You drag this uh, little triangle over onto there and that actually applies that color calibration. And we should see the colors correct a little bit and get a little bit more natural. A little bit of uh, anticlimax, wasn't it? Now we're gonna do the background neutralization, which should, in theory, turn all of this background of space back to black. Back in black. Here we go. That is starting to look a little bit more natural. Bicolor is always has a little bit of a flat quality, which I don't like. I would always advise going for that third filter if you can. 
Uh, but if you can't, or if you just got too drunk that night or whatever, woo! Okay, so that looks pretty good, but there's still a little bit of a green tinge to that. Can you see that there? Uh, so let's go to the SCNR tool, uh, which is a kind of noise reduction tool, but it focuses on the green bias. And that is starting to look almost natural. Uh, at this point, I would do post post processing. So what I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to run the histogram transformation stretch. Once again, really unintuitive, but we're going to pull this little triangle from the screen transfer function tool over the histogram tool. Then we're going to drag the triangle from the histogram tool over to the image. Uh, so dumb. And then we're going to hit the little preview icon in the screen transfer function to turn that preview stretch off because it's applying that stretch twice. Uh, we get back to what the image actually is now. So we can save that off as a TIFF file. Okay, we're going to drag this stretch over to the histogram. We're going to drag that triangle back over to the image, same as before. Turn off the preview and save this off as a TIFF as well. 16-bit is all you need. And now we're going to pop over into Photoshop. <laughs> I do get excited looking at this data even even at this yeah even at this early stage I can tell that this is looking pretty good so uh, what we're going to do here we're going to start we've got the uh, HOO channel combination there and we've got the hydrogen alpha layer itself which is what I'm going to use with the detail because the stars are a bit tighter and a bit nicer but we want the color data from this one so I'm just going to go into image change this mode to RGB which is what we want We've got two layers here as you can see and I'm going to change the combination here down to color and it's starting to look a bit washed out right uh, we lose a lot of contrast in this step and the colors can go a bit a bit weird I think what I might do is put a levels here in between the color layer and the background layer just to give it a bit more contrast that brightness is a bit more even not so luminous but I can still see the gray stuff in the background, which is good. Uh, but the colors are a bit off. You'll notice that these stars, they seem a little bit green to me. So I'm gonna show you a little cheat. This is a post post processing cheat. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in, oh man, <laughs> would you look at that? Sorry, I just have to stop for a sec, cause this, look at this data. That is just wild. This is a quick and dirty hack here, but what I'm gonna do is get the magic wand tool I'm going to turn the tolerance all the way down to four so it's going to get most stuff i'm going to turn contiguous the little tick up here for contiguous off uh, so when i select a star it actually selects all the stars around it uh, of the same basic color so i'm going to hold down shift here and just keep clicking on stars uh, but not the red ones i'm only going to go for the bluey sort of greeny stars and we want to fix this green in them and what I'm going to do is go select, modify, expand. I'm going to expand by about 25. And now all of our blue stars should have a nice little ring around them, which is nice. And now I'm going to feather, select, modify, feather. Oh, about 10 is good, yep. And let's zoom out a bit here. We should have a lot of blue stars selected there. And layer new adjustment layer which will use this selection of the mask and we'll change it to curves. I think curves should give us a nice control over this star color. Now they're looking way more natural, see? Before you save and do star net, you should resize to the eventual size you're going to use because star net doesn't work very well with these really large images and you can see now uh, that this image is 12,000 pixels across after drizzling. So I'm gonna... And let's get a little bit of Starnet action. Oh, there we go. Save this off. Healing tool. I'm going to save this as the starless layer. Back to my star image. Flatten them all down into their own layer. Copy that layer and dump it over. So you can see we have a layer with stars and without stars. Go to difference here, 
in the blending modes. And now we have an image which is just stars. Starless image. Copy the stars back in there. We can change the blending mode to whatever we like. A color dodge looks pretty good there. So I kind of like that. The rest is up to you and your subjectivity with how you pull those sliders around and uh, you don't want to go too crazy. All right. Oh, that, that trick doesn't work here. Thank <music> you.